Good morning, and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, and I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. to provide landowners valuable information you need regarding the natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. And so if you're looking for landowner information, this is the show for you. I represent landowners and only landowners for such items as gas leasing. We're doing a lot more gas leases recently. Water lines, pipelines, I have many, many active pipeline files with many different companies across the state of Pennsylvania. I think it's safe to say now that I've represented clients uh, in negotiations in well over 40 different and close to about 50 different pipeline companies all across the state of Pennsylvania. So all the way down to Greene County in the southwestern corner of the state and all the way up through actually through Wayne County in the northeastern portion of the state. So continue to do a lot, a lot of pipeline work. And that's something truly that you really need. If you're trying to do it on your own, I, I plead with you, get some assistance because it is very important. A lot of times there may be more compensation available. There may be the ability for you as a landowner to simply say, no, you're not interested. And that may be the best choice for you. And a lot of times it is, you know, a lot of times I talk to clients, I say, hey, look, uh, why are you doing this? Are you sure that this is something that you want to do? So we wanna make sure that that you understand your ability to say no and then if you don't have the ability to say no then we want to make sure that we're going to maximize compensation which is always a big part of it but then also you want to maximize and get the most beneficial terms that are available for you as a landowner and if you're doing this for the first time or you're working with somebody who hasn't done this before it's almost a guarantee that you're not going to be able to take full advantage of what this opportunity is or even if it's not an opportunity you want to make sure that you're taking full advantages or advantage as to what you may be able to do to maximize your agreement to get the best agreement possible so again whether it's me or somebody else please make sure if you have any contract and we're talking a little bit about pipeline right away agreements here now make sure that you're getting some experience assistance it, you know, don't be afraid of, hey, what's it going to cost or how much of an investment is this going to be? You know, I don't know if I've had a client where I could say, boy, um, I think they would have been better off if they didn't get any assistance. And a lot of times, I mean, sometimes the compensation increases in some cases by hundreds of thousands of dollars, literally. Not always. That's obviously a rare case, but it, it does occur. In many cases, it increases by thousands of dollars. And, you know, I think that across the board, my clients would come back and say, yeah, you know, I really think that was a, uh, a great move of getting you involved because we really got a much better deal. So like I say, whether it's me or somebody else, please make sure that you're getting assistance. If you're looking for assistance from me in these issues or any other, you can always contact me at 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. Another issue, I'm going to just touch on this now, and I'll, I'll tell you a lead in. I'm going to talk about damage releases today. And as I say every time I talk pretty much, I, I get into you know, this show, you may say, oh, damage releases, let me click this thing off and move on. Well, because it doesn't apply to you. But even if it doesn't apply to you, these, these are kind of like lessons, if you will, of how these contracts work, how the companies operate. And so even though maybe a damage release or a well site agreement doesn't apply to you because you don't have any activity on the property now, it also can give you insight as to how companies operate, how they operate now, how they operate with these type of agreements, but also most of the time you can relate to this, this agreement and these operations to other agreements. So even though it's a damage receipt and release or a damage agreement, you may see how well, wow, these whole ideas and these concerns, they also completely tie to pipeline agreements, gas leases, all of these things really tie together. And who knows, maybe in the future, you will get that knock on the door or you'll get that telephone call or you'll get that letter in the mail talking about, hey, we're gonna put a well site on your property or we're gonna do something on your property. And then after that, you're always gonna have this damage release or this document, which is gonna be essentially, and we're gonna get into this in detail, but the damage release is gonna be where the company is gonna pay you a certain amount of compensation in exchange, they want you to sign a release saying, okay, yes, uh, I agree I received this money that you've paid me, and in exchange, I agree that you're not gonna owe me any more money for the damages that you've caused or will cause to my property. So we're gonna get into that. I know I've talked about that before, but I got some really nice specific examples I wanna get into because this is, again, 
I look at things. I jot down ideas for the show. I got a whole bunch of them lined up, <laughs> but this is something that's really came up recently a few times. You know, I have about four or five different clients. Actually, I probably have a few more than that who currently have damage release agreements pending in front of them. And rarely, unfortunately, you know, it really is unfortunate. It rarely does the company present the landowner with a damage release or agreement which doesn't need to be tweaked or adjusted in some fashion. You know, these guys, these companies, they have these documents drafted by very skilled lawyers who have worked on these type of issues for, well, the companies for sometimes over 100 years, you know, 50 years, decades, whatever we want to say. You know, you're not the first person to get a damage release. And when they give you that document, just think back to the leases. I say this all the time. Think back to the lease. And when they gave you that lease, could they have given you a stronger lease? Could they have given you a better lease? Look at leases that other people have entered into after you. You know, they're giving you, the bar is very, very low when they're giving you that first document. You need to understand, can I change that document? Again, I am attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. And I want to touch on, we're going to talk about damage releases again, but I want to touch on to the royalty issue just briefly and say, you know, we are still pending. We're waiting for the, now remember, if you're listening to this, in the future you know this show is from july of 2014 so if you're listening to this in the future i, I want to make sure that you have fresh information but what we're waiting for is the arbitration panel's ruling uh and you know that could come any day it could come next month it could come in two months you know we don't know it could come uh tomorrow you know just don't know when this ruling will come in but we're waiting for a very important ruling and i think that's going to provide a lot of guidance and certainly push this case or these cases in different ways but regardless of what this ruling is i believe that it's critically important for everybody to understand if you're getting royalties or even if you're not getting royalties yet even if you're not getting royalties yet you need to understand especially if you're leased well if you're leased with chesapeake in whole or in part so any portion of your lease is with chesapeake you need to have an evaluation and, and determine, hey, um, does this apply to me? Where do I fit in in this process? And so what I do is, if you have a lease and it's held in whole or in part with Chesapeake, whether or not you're getting royalties, you can send me your lease. If you're getting royalties, just send me one month worth of royalties from all the companies that are paying you royalties. And I will look at this. I will give you a free confidential no obligation to proceed with anything whatsoever evaluation and just let you know hey are you part of this proposed class action that we're inter that we have intervened and we're over 100 and uh, I think over 160 clients that we represent in these issues and we want you I want you I really want you to be informed if you want to participate and you think this settlement is a good thing and you want to speak out for it do that you know but be informed about this because this is really really important and obviously and you can go back and pa gas lease attorney .com and check out the uh the website there we i've done many many shows in this topic and i'll do more shows on this topic as as more information starts coming in and as we get rulings but you can go check out the websites and learn more about this i don't want to make it all about today's show but what i do want to want to stress is if you're out there there is no reason that I can think of why you should not get this evaluation to understand where you fit in. From there, it's up to you. And I tell you, and I promise you, and, and you'll see if you send in your paperwork, it's confidential. It's no obligation. There's no, hey, you need to sign up with us. You need to do this. You need to do that. That is your call. What you need to do, what you need to do is find out how do I how does this apply to me where do I fit in in this process and what options do I have and then you make the best decision you make the decision for your circumstances but sitting on the sidelines and not knowing in my opinion is a mistake you really need to find that out and I'm willing to spend the time to make sure that everybody understands well hopefully not everybody at once but <laughs> to make sure that everybody understands okay hey what do, where do I fit in in this and I'll give you my opinion usually I get back to you within 7 to 14 days and typically in in a written form so 
you can read it. You know, not even harassing you and or never would harass anybody, but certainly not to like say, hey, you need to do this or need to do that. I want you to be informed. And in the meantime, you can go check out again, pagasleaseattorney.com and pipelineattorney.com for a lot of great information on the gas site. We have a lot of information up and available regarding uh, the class action, what we're doing, where it stands, there's filings available, but you can check out yourself too. I mean, these are public records in the middle district of Pennsylvania in front of federal judge Mannion uh, in the Scranton courthouse. You can check that out as well. You can go online and check that out. My belief as it's been since started doing this show in April of 2010, my belief has always been information, 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 that's the key, credible, information you know we've been doing the show since april or excuse me august of 2010 so we want to make sure that you have credible and also we want to make sure that you have relevant and current information because the market conditions have changed drastically over just those four years or so that i've been doing the radio show but certainly you know dating back say to 2005 six seven eight you know things are so much different not just leasing but pipelines, not just pipelines and leasing, but well sites, not just those things, but compressors. The whole situation, the whole landscape has changed drastically and you need to keep up with it. You can't just look at old stale information and think you're keeping up and being current or looking at what your neighbor did six months ago or a year ago, because that's not necessarily and typically is not current and it's not good information that you should be relying on. So anyway, I am Attorney Doug Clark. This is All Things Marcellus. We're here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. And a reminder to, you can go back, like I said, I've been doing the show since August of 2010. You could go back to the websites at pagasleaseattorney.com. That's pagasleaseattorney.com or pipelineattorney.com. Check out the prior radio shows. They're archived and available through the websites. A lot of other great landowner information there. So you should definitely visit the sites, check that out. And if you need representation or if you have questions or you want to send in information and you need some more information, you can contact me, contact the office anytime directly at 570 570- 307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. And if I'm not around, we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. But want to make sure again, whether you're calling me or you're calling somebody else, make sure that you're not just signing any contract, any document that a company is providing to you. And it's one of these things where and we get this where I have clients and I have lenders who work with and they'll send me a document which is a nice simple document that there's not a problem for the landowner to sign. You know, it's just really not something that has substance to it, something that they need for their records. And we say, look, it takes a, you know, a minute and there's not even, a, it's not even a, what I would call a billable event. It just takes a minute. Hey, yeah, uh, no problem at all. You could sign this. So, you know, it's not like you need to be afraid when you're, you shouldn't be afraid to, to contact an attorney and say, hey, uh, because if it's something, I'm worried about the expense, because if it's something that doesn't require time, then and it's something that's simple, you're not going to have this bill or a big bill. If it's something that's complicated and does require time and it is going to take some hours, well, that tells you that there's a reason that it's going to take time. So you should have called somebody because you shouldn't just sign these things. And there's, I get the calls all the time where people say, boy, I wish I didn't sign that. So make sure beforehand that you're exploring these things. And you know, you need to find an attorney that you're going to be comfortable with um, and who's experienced and somebody you're comfortable with. So that's important, whether it's me or somebody else. Okay, we're up against the end of the first segment. I'm going to talk about a damage release here, get into some details of that, some things to look forward to. And remember, these concerns aren't just for damage releases. They go across the board to all kinds of other documents. You are listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark. We're here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m., and I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark. And again, a reminder, I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. to discuss landowner issues and hopefully provide valuable information that landowners need regarding the natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. And again, I am Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. And you can always reach out to me directly at 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. 0702. Okay, I want to talk about today, I want to talk about some damage release documents. And let me go back again and explain what I mean by that. What happens is, 
you may have, and this could be from gas leases, it could be from pipeline agreements, essentially any agreement or any operation that a gas or pipeline company is gonna perform on your property is gonna typically involve some sort of damages where they may be easy as cutting timber, maybe crop damages, just mere damage to the surface of that property, but it's gonna involve some type of damages. So what happens is, some of the older typical leases that weren't negotiated just simply say that for any operations that are conducted on the property, the company must pay damages for the surface for such items as timber, and typically it'll say growing crops. Now that's a real key word, growing crops. It doesn't say damages to crops that may be planted next year or crops throughout the next 20 years while a well site or 50 years while a well site is on a property, it says in the lease, and I, I don't think I've never not seen the word, never not, I've always seen the word that says growing crops, not just crops, but growing crops. And it's really important, and that's why it's in there. They're not, again, <laughs> these aren't their first rodeos here. So what they put in there is growing crops. So now what happens is, and I get this complaint, and understandably, all the time from landowners who call and say, hey, uh, the company wants to pay me to put a well site in the property, but they don't want to pay me very much money. And in fact, they only want to pay me, you know, say $500 for my crops in these fields that they're going to destroy. And say, well, here's what the problem is. And the lander says, you know, that well site is going to be there for the next 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years, maybe even more. So, you know, I don't think it's fair that the company should only pay me for crops for one year. I, they should pay me the entire area that's being impacted for as long as that well site is there. And that makes a lot of sense. You know, that does make a lot of sense. And certainly I agree. And as from my landowner perspective, that's what we'd like to see. However, across the board, I've never seen a company agree to do that because they'll always turn and point to the growing crops language. Sorry, sir, but we're only obligated to pay for growing crops. So once we go in and we conduct our operations, our obligations are over. You know, we pay you for growing crops. Now, that's something obviously landowners get very frustrated about. A lot of companies now, what I've seen across northeastern Pennsylvania, will typically offer a one-time payment of say fifteen thousand dollars is a number I see a few companies pay. Uh, a flat fee, a flat figure that they'll pay people, and they'll say, okay. Uh, we're going to give you this, say, fifteen thousand dollars, and that's the same whether you have a eight or excuse me, an eight acre well pad or a twelve acre well pad. You know, that's what these companies are doing, and just trying to come up with this flat number. Of course, now they say, well, we want to be fair to everybody. Well, there's some truth to that, but then at the same time, is it fair that you give fifteen thousand dollars to somebody with an eight acre disturbance on their property, and fifteen thousand dollars to somebody that has a twenty? acre disturbance. Now, on the flip side of that is, well, if your lease only says that you're entitled to damage to timber and growing crops, the chances of that timber and growing crops damages equaling or exceeding $15,000, even if you have 15 or 20 acres impacted, are going to be extremely small. You know, I haven't seen a case yet where we were able to establish crop and timber damage in excess of $15,000. I stress again, yet. I'm sure it's out there. It depends, you know, if they're just going, if a company's going in a major wooded area and has to clear out a lot of space, then very well that timber appraisal and that value may exceed $15,000, but usually we don't see that. So it's a situation where, well, $15,000 is more than what you're typically entitled to under your lease. So even though maybe you have a little more disturbance or even a lot more disturbance of somebody else who's also getting 15,000, at least you're getting as much or more than what you're entitled to in your lease. So that's an important part of this process. So though we may not be crazy about it, we wanna make sure that you're getting what you're entitled to in your lease, but also if you're able to, to negotiate or receive additional compensation, then that's something that you wanna make sure that you're taking advantage of that opportunity. In a lot of cases, that can be the case. You just need to work on it, make sure you're handling it the right way. Again, I am Attorney Doug Clark. This is All Things Marcellus. I'm here with you 
every Sunday from 8 to 9 and talking about damaged releases. Talking a little general here, one thing, like I said, I wanted to get that growing crops out there because that's a, an issue and a question that comes up all the time where landowners are very frustrated, understandably. They get a well site on the property. They're going to lose the ability to farm and to harvest the crops in that area where the well site is, and they're only going to get payment one time. They're not going to get a payment each and every year for the amount of crops that have been destroyed or the area of the field that's been impacted. You're just not going to see that unless it was negotiated in the oil and gas lease. And typically, you know, we don't see that. Now, another thing, things to look out, and I talk about you know, what happens is you negotiate or you have in your lease. Now, I, I used the example there at the beginning where a bare bones basic lease is almost always going to say that you're entitled to timber damages and damages to growing crops on the property. Okay, Generally, across the board, you're going to see that in all leases. Then we look at, okay, well, what else was negotiated in the addendum to your lease was there some negotiations that occurred that may entitle you to additional compensations and then of course also maybe additional protections you know how big is this area going to be sometimes in the addendums and some of the i think like the friendsville lease i think there's um i can't remember off the top of my head but it might be like thirty five hundred dollars an acre uh for what the individual needs to be compensated for if they're going to operate on the property. So if that's a, a 10 acre pad and you are entitled to $3,500 an acre, that's $35,000, obviously a lot more than the $15,000 that you may be paid under a typical lease by a lot of companies. But also there are companies out there that won't even pay 15. They just look at the lease and say, Hey, uh, we're only obligated to pay timber and crop damages. Here are the appraisals that we have performed. And here's the money that we're willing to offer you. You know, Will you accept that, sign a lease? And if you won't accept it, then typically they say, well, too bad, we're going to operate anyway. We've done what we've done. Um, or we, we're going to operate according to the terms of the lease. Excuse me. So anyway, okay. So the next part of this is we look and say, got your basic lease. What do you have in the addendum? What do you have in the addendum that may entitle you to additional payments? A lot of times you'll see in leases where the landowner has negotiated a well site fee. Now, this can be done in many, many different ways. It can be simply stating a you know, well site fee, and often you see 10, 15, 20, $25,000, that type of range. That language is very important. Like I said, it can be written in a lot of different ways. So when you're looking at the well site fee, you need to look and see, and I might say well pad fee. There's so many ways it can be written. But you need to look and see, number one, how is that structured? Is it on a per acre basis? So if the well pad is 10 acres, are you entitled to so many thousands of dollars per acre impacted? And you see those out there. But more commonly, what we see out there is leases that say things like, you're entitled to $15,000 for a well site on the property. Now, the problem that you run into and the, and the thing that you really need to look at is, okay, well, we talked about crops and timber. And usually if you have a well site fee in your agreement of say 15,000, it could be 25, it can be 10, you know, we see them all different numbers. What we have to look at is, okay, what other addendum terms do you have in your lease? Do you have a term in your addendum that says a timber provision or a crop provision? And if you do, how is that worded? And how do those two terms play into or interact with this well site fee that I'm talking about? In other words, do you get the $15,000 for the well site plus whatever the timber is worth, plus whatever the crops are worth? So you would get $15,000 and obviously more money for the timber and crops. Or, and a lot of leases are written this way, you gotta be careful because some of them will say, in the well site fee that that well site fee also covers timber and crops but then we still see timber and crop provisions in these agreements so you need to be very careful now what i have found on multiple occasions okay more than once what i've ran into is a company looking to offer a landowner say fifteen thousand dollars because that is what's in the agreement for the well site fee or a well pad fee because you're going to have this pad and roadway the lease says you get fifteen thousand but that company is not offering anything for timber they're not offering anything in addition for crops so they're saying that fifteen thousand covers it but when you look through the lease language in some cases that i found it doesn't cover that fifteen thousand dollars and timber and crops are separate so you need to look at that because sometimes those 
timber and crop damages can be thousands and thousands of dollars. So you need to make sure that the company isn't just looking at the well site fee and saying this is all you're entitled to, when in fact you may be entitled to additional compensation. So that's really important and I've seen that a couple times. The, the worst case, and I've talked about this on the show before, rarely, and I wanna stress this too, rarely, but they are out there, some agreements say that the landowner is compensated for each well drilled, for each well drilled. And I think this one was $6,000, but we'll, we'll say it's 5,000 just for ease of math to help me out here. Okay, so in this particular landowner, for each well that was drilled, he was to get $5,000. Well, they were offering him this agreement and saying, okay, hey, here's your damages. We want you to sign this to get $5,000. And in that agreement, it said that that would essentially, well, it said that would be his only payment, that they would then be released of all other obligations to pay him in the future. Well, thankfully, you know, he looked at it. We looked at it and said, hey, wait a second. This is $5,000 per well. And maybe that was easy enough to figure out. But that damage release, that document, that the company wanted the gentleman to sign in order to receive his first $5,000, that document had language that would cancel any future obligation to pay more money. So if the second well was going in, they wouldn't have to pay an additional $5,000. Even though the lease said that they would, it, the lease would be canceled or modified, not the whole lease, but this term would be modified and essentially wiped away once this landowner signed this damage release form. And that gets back to, that's what I'm gonna talk a lot about most of the show here today. A damage release form. Whether you have the old lease, that old lease that just says timber or growing crops. Whether you have a lease that says you get 10,000, 15 or $25,000 for a well site on your property. Whether you have that language. Whether you have some more complicated language that says that you get both a well site fee and some timber damages and crop damages and possibly some other payments, anytime a company is gonna pay you any of that money, they're gonna want to have you sign a document called a damage release or a settlement and damage release. It's gonna happen every single time. And it makes sense and it's customary and it's practice because they don't want to pay you, say, $15,000, and then you come back and say, hey, you owe me more money for crops and timber. So they want to document, we're giving you this certain amount of money, and in exchange for this money, we want a receipt saying that you've accepted it, and you agree that we don't owe you any more money for these damages, or we don't owe you any more money under the terms of the lease. So that's very important. So what we need to do is, we need to really look at that damage release document. We need to make sure that it doesn't go further than what it needs to. And many times, and quite frankly, in almost every occasion, almost every one, those documents go too far, in my opinion. So I'm gonna talk about that, we're up against it again. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. We're here every Sunday, eight to 9 a.m., and I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm, here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. to give you valuable information regarding the natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. Of course, this is the show for landowners, and that's what I do is represent landowners and only landowners for all types of matters all across the state of Pennsylvania. And I touched on earlier, if you are getting royalties or if you're leased to Chesapeake, or if you're getting royalties from any company and you want a free, confidential, no obligation whatsoever evaluation, where I will look at your royalty statements, I will look at your lease, and I'll let you know whether I feel that a company is taking improper deductions. And what I mean by that is taking deductions that aren't authorized under the terms of the oil and gas lease. I'm not able to tell you, hey, they should have only de deducted say $500 instead of $1,000. You know, I don't have that information and can't make that determination. But what I can do is look at a lease and say, you know, under the terms of this lease, I do not believe in my opinion that the company is legally authorized to take certain deductions, such as typically gathering, transportation fees, compression fees, things of that nature. And again, we represent 
I think I'm at 160, I think we are uh, roughly uh, clients, individual clients with respect to these issues. So, you know, this is a, um, <laughs> it's, a I, it's a million dollar issue plus, and I truly believe it's a billion dollar issue. And this is something that, you know, if these deductions are occurring and they are improper and you're able to stop them, you know, we're talking about these deductions occurring for the lifetime of these leases. So a lot of great information on the websites on that at pagasleaseattorney.com. But you want a free confidential evaluation, no obligation to do anything. I want you to be informed. I really want you to be informed. You can contact us anytime at 570 570- 307-0702 tell you what to need to do what you need to send us and we'll uh, I'll get back to you you know I'll personally get back to you and let you know what my opinion is and then you from there you make your own decision but at least get that there's no reason in the world not to I am attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm and what we're talking here today about on the show all things Marcellus is damage releases and I want to just again set it back real quick here for people who may just join us what we're talking about is when a company conducts operations on a property, whether it be a gas company, a pipeline company, or any other company or contractor is gonna operate under the terms of any agreement, like a gas lease, a pipeline agreement, a surface agreement, any of the types of agreements, when they're gonna operate in the property, they're gonna ask that you sign a damage receipt and release before they give you a check, before they pay you for damages, and I, I gave the example before, and again, quickly resetting it. On a standard lease, the standard form lease that every company provides, a lot of different forms, but all companies use some sort of standard form lease, and typically they're a little bit different, but the overall, uh, the, the gist of everything is very, very similar. Some are a little tougher on landowners, some are a little more liberal, but that first agreement that you receive almost always is gonna say that if there are operations on your property, you're entitled to timber damages and damages for growing crops, growing crops, not crops damages for the next 50 years while the well site is on there or however long it's on, but for what is growing at the time of these operations. So that's very, very important. You may not be entitled, you know, certainly if you're if the operation is occurring in December, there's a good chance you may not have crops growing there. You may or may not. Now, I have found that a lot of times companies will pay according to a crop appraisal, even if those crops aren't growing at that time, but you want to make sure you're taking advantage of that as well. But, you know, they're not necessarily obligated, but certainly looking at a very small expense typically to uh, to try to take that opportunity to say how they work with landowners and want to be a good neighbor. Okay, so anyway, so what they want to do is they want to come in, they want you to sign a damage receipt and release or a settlement document it may be called in order to pay you. Now you may have additional terms in your addendum that require more than just growing crops and timber to be paid, timber damages. And what we see a lot of times is there's a specific well site fee where they'll say, and I'll use the example of $15,000 for any well site access road on the property. So again, those are written a lot of different ways. And you have to watch because maybe you're entitled to $15,000 if just a piece of a roadway or a small portion of a roadway goes on the property. Maybe you're only entitled to $15,000 on a prorated basis. So if it's a 20 acre well pad and the project's a 20 acre project and you only have five acres, I'll make it simpler, say it's a 15 acre pad and roadway and only five of those 15 acres of disturbance on the surface of the ground or on your property, then since you are entitled to $15,000, maybe if it's written a certain way, and a lot of them are unfortunately, that you have that bonus prorated. So of a 15 acre pad site with a roadway, you only have five acres of disturbance, you're entitled to a $15,000 payment under your lease, but since you only have five acres, well, then you're only entitled to $5,000 in that example. So you really, really have to look at these, and you need to look at them, because many times what I see is the company, you know, whether by accident, whether it be on purpose, who knows, but what you see is, is that 
the companies give a landowner a release and that release goes beyond what it should say and what i'm talking about there is is that maybe you are entitled to more damages than what they're willing to offer what they're offering you and maybe they're offering you a, a document that's going to limit your ability to get future damages and even worse maybe they're going to offer you this document and dangle this fifteen thousand dollars or whatever in front of you and maybe you're going to give up some uh, potential protection that you had against any liability issues for example what i mean by that and this is probably you know, there's a lot of disturbing parts of this but probably the most disturbing or most concerning thing is is this if a company is going to operate on your property these are major industrial operations and unfortunately as a result of major industrial operations sometimes people are injured and sometimes people actually are unfortunately killed in these operations with work accidents what have you so what we want to make sure we have big machinery we have people working with this machinery we want to make sure that you as a landowner you're not going to expose yourself to any liability so hopefully in your oil and gas lease you have good indemnification language or language that's going to cover you in case there's an accident so hopefully you have that and let's say you do well one thing that you want to make sure is before you sign any damage receipt or release before you sign any release you need to make sure that you are not giving up any liability protection that you already have that is so critical I mean it's not worth I mean typically it's not even worth signing if you're gonna be giving up any liability protection now thankfully it's very unlikely that somebody's gonna be hurt or killed on your property in these operations thankfully 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 however if it happens once and it happens to you now you have a big problem so or potentially so we want to make sure that you're protected as much as possible now some of these older leases some of the older leases do not have good indemnification protection indemnification I should just explain briefly that's just saying that the company will indemnify you hold you harmless essentially protect and defend you in the event that anybody sues you as a result of their operations on your property so you want to make sure that you're protected hey you're not involved in it you're not going to be out there you know swinging a hammer digging a ditch shoveling anything like that so you want to make sure you're not going to be exposed to any lawsuits and even being sued you want to make sure then that you're going to be defended by the company because you don't want to have to pay for an attorney to defend you even though you didn't do anything wrong you're still going to need a defense in to explain you didn't do anything wrong if your name appears on that lawsuit so you need to make sure that you're covered so I said some of these older leases have very poor indemnification language or none at all so this could be an opportunity to put in some language to make sure that you're gonna be covered here so this could be an opportunity to kinda get some other language another thing is just jumping a bit if a company earlier is coming out to you and saying hey we want to put a well site on your property we want you to sign this agreement that's the key time that is your best time you look at your lease and you say okay I'm not comfortable with my indemnification language or the protection I have and maybe even more importantly I don't have any protection well often if that is the case we're able to get the company to agree as part of your agreement of the well site location uh, whether your agreement to sign off on any of these documents to agree to go ahead and give you some indemnification protection at that point so that's a nice opportunity to cover yourself in case there's a future problem so those are little things like that which could be big things or areas where you should know about and that's where hopefully somebody's helping you and helping to point these things out and seeing what you can do to make sure that you're taking advantage and not being taken advantage of in every time that you're getting these agreements or these documents to sign Again, I am attorney Doug Clark this is all things Marcellus I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. talking about damage releases okay so again I want to go back and say what happens now is the company is going to say to you we want you to sign this document this damage receipt this damage release this 
uh, damage settlement, whatever that title is. There's a lot of different forms. We want you to sign this and then we'll give you the money that we owe you for the damages to your property. But that document has to be reviewed very carefully and in my opinion it must be reviewed by a lawyer because you're potentially giving up protections, the ability to get compensation in the future, the, the potentially if there's a problem in the future you may be waiving your right to file any lawsuit and again I'm not out here trying to create lawsuits but if there's a spill if there's an issue if you feel that you've had some sort of physical damage if it's dust issues to your house maybe is all dusty you got to pay for somebody to come clean it and you know, things like that you need to look and that's again that's a big deal but it's not the same as hey I think I have a physical ailment as a result of these operations or somebody got hurt or property got damaged and now you should pay for this and the company says well no here you go you sign this damage receipt you sign this release we don't have to do anything you want to make sure that you're not giving up any more than what you want to I'll say this and I'm gonna I'm sure I'm gonna say this again in today's show you have the company wants to give you a damage re receipt and release and they want you to sign that in exchange to give you money and I had this debate with these guys in the company um, just recently in the last couple weeks I said you know all right falls back to that old saying possession is nine-tenths of the law and what we have here is a situation where you have a lease that says company must pay me fifteen thousand dollars say before they start operating on my property the lease is clear couldn't be more clear and company you owe the landowner fifteen thousand dollars before you go on the property however that fifteen thousand dollars is in your possession meaning company's possession so when I say possession is nine-tenths of the law, the company possesses that $15,000. They owe it to you. You're entitled to $15,000, but they're holding it. So even though your lease says you owe me $15,000 before you start operating, well, just because it says it and you hold it up to them and say, you owe me this, and they don't pay it to you, what do you do? Well, you're going to have to, if they refuse to pay you, you'd have to go into court in some fashion and say, you owe me this money, pay me this money. That's what you would have to do if they don't pay you. So they possess this money, and even though they're obligated under the terms and it's clear that they have to pay you, they're not going to pay you unless you sign a release that they want you to sign. Now, the key part is, well, what is going to be in that release? And I'll be right back after this break. I'm right up against it. This is All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark, from the Clark Law Firm, here every Sunday from 8 to 9. I'm going to be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. And again, we are here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. And you can also go back to the websites. You can listen to the archived radio shows. Dating back to August of 2010, you can go back to pagasleaseattorney.com. That's pagasleaseattorney.com or pipelineattorney.com. You can check out the prior shows and not just the shows. You know, there's a lot of great information there. And if you need representation or you have any questions regarding the issues here we've discussed, you can always contact me, 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. You can also email questions through the websites you can do that as well and then we'll get back to you or, and also topic is topics for uh, future shows you have any issues you'd like to hear me talk about you send those out and we'll see if we can get uh, you know get that up on and discuss it in discussion here in the upcoming weeks okay with that said I want to jump back now we're talking about damage releases and I telling you it, it's not even just a damage release to remember this I say how when we talk about these subjects that a lot of times it's not just this subject that these items and these thoughts and these concepts transfer to a lot of other types of agreements so I have said the word release a lot of times a release is a very very important legal document before you sign any release please take it to an attorney take it to an attorney it has complicated language typically it's usually riddled with legalese uh, language so you when you see that you need to those flags should go up 
I need to make sure that what I'm signing, I understand. The same with every other document. And they're all super, super important. When you're talking about a release, you're releasing or giving up. You're giving up rights forever. So you wanna make sure that you're not giving up rights that you didn't realize that you're giving up. You wanna make sure that you're not releasing or giving up any more than what you're willing to give up. And usually, usually in these releases, they are too broad at the beginning and they require work. You know, obviously you say, hey, well, unfortunately for the landowner, it's some job security, I guess, for lawyers, but you know, we don't write these documents, the company lawyers do. And when they write these documents and give them to you, they're writing them to get the best arrangement for them as the company, not you as the landowner. So again, it makes sense. Let me walk through it one last time here. So my quick little example, you have a lease that says you're entitled to $15,000 if there's a well site on your property. And you're entitled to this prior to the company starting work on your property. Well, a lot of people think, well, okay, they're gonna come out here and they should hand me a check and start working. Well, they're not just gonna hand you a check. They're gonna want you to sign this release because what they're saying in these cases is gonna be, is the standard, would be that, well, we're giving you this 15,000, that's this well site fee, that's covering damages to your property the damages of timber and crops and what other damages may occur. So that's what they're gonna pay you. So they want you to sign and think about it. I've said damage, receipt, and release before here today. What it should be, in my opinion, more is, uh, and I understand it being released, it's like a receipt. It really should be more like a receipt in these type of cases. I'm giving you, company says, I'm giving you $15,000 in exchange you're getting a release for crops and timber damage. That's the essence of what this document should say. It should not get into any more than that. It should not get into waiving punitive damage claims, waiving other causes of action. It should not get into confidentiality. It should not get into waivers of how far this well pad is from your property or excuse me, your residence. It should not go to those points. It should be limited to, what are we doing here? My lease says that you have to give me $15,000 before you start operating. And say we agree that $15,000 is for crop and timber damage. What should I do? Well, if you're gonna make me sign a document before you're gonna give me my money, well, I'm gonna make sure it's a document that complies with the terms of the lease that says, Here's my $15,000, I'm receiving it, and I'm releasing you for the crops and timber damage that you're going to commit, or it's going to occur on my property. Now, remember though, well, this is going on before they start working. So what if, it, what if there's a lot more impact than what you thought on certain type of agreements that's gonna be very relevant? Well, usually you're gonna have, and you should have, this map which will illustrate and depict the exact area of operations and what they call a limit of disturbance or a limit of cut where they're going to cut trees or where they're going to disturb the property because they have to permit this with the DEP in Pennsylvania. So you can look at this map and see, okay, here's exactly how many acres are going to be impacted on my property. So whether again, whether this is a well consent form or whether this is a damage release, on a damage release side, you wanna make sure that you're only releasing for damages in this mapped out, clearly defined area. I use this crazy example, if a truck breaks loose and goes off the road and, and is in neutral, somebody leaves it and it goes rolling down the road and it causes a bunch of damage, well, you shouldn't be responsible for that. In fact, if it's damage to your property, you should be compensated for that. So we wanna make sure, and that's just one small example, we wanna make sure that you're not giving up any additional rights. And I talked about the well site location. This is critical. You have in your agreement, in your lease typically, a lot of people do, a consent provision that says, I get to consent, mutual consent, company has to talk to me, consult with me, and we mutually agree, but I can't be unreasonable, but we mutually agree on where the well site is going to be located. Okay, that's fine, 
But when you sign off and say you find a spot and you're okay with this, well, when you sign off and you consent, you need to make sure that you're consenting to solely the location that you're agreeing to. And that may sound silly, but you have a map. You need to sign off on that map that clearly defines where these limits of disturbance are. Where is this going to be? These disturbances. Where is the well pad going to be located? And if you change this location company, we have to go through this process again. And many times what the company does is in these consent forms, they say, okay, well, we have the ability to shift or move this uh, after you sign it. We, no, we want to just preserve the lease rights. So you got to be careful on that. I am attorney Doug Clark. This is All Things Marcellus. We're here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. talking about mostly here damage releases. And I want to jump back to that then. So, okay, remember, and we're using this one example. You may have a damage release that's based not on a $15,000 flat payment, but crops and timber. Again, it's very important that if you're going to sign a release and releasing for a certain payment and say because you, they're not paying you a flat fee, but they're paying you... 10, 000, or excuse me, they're paying you a per acre price for damages on crops and timber, or they're paying you according to an appraisal. Well, you want to make sure you're not signing off on damages that go beyond what's shown in that map or what you understand. You want to make sure, because this is occurring, you're, they're asking you to sign this before these operations even occur. So you don't want to sign off on, okay, yeah, I agree, I'm going to take this $7,455 in timber damages and crops damages, but then when the company comes, the, pipe, the, the site is expanded, there's more damages, or you didn't understand where all these damages were going to occur, but now you've signed a release. That release is there to protect the company from you coming back to make additional claims for the company. Again, that release is designed to protect the company to say, you can't come back at me being the company to say that you're owed more money or that I owe you more money for other damages. You can't come back at me because you've signed this release. So, what does it make sense for any company or any party in a situation like this to do? Well, you want to have a release as broad as possible to cover as many things as possible. But your gas lease says this payment is for crops and timber only. So that damage release, that release should be, I accept this money in exchange for acknowledging that you've paid me for crops and timber damages and I will not come back I don't have the right to come back to sue you or to seek in any way more crop and timber damages because I've accepted this money that's what the document should be across the board across the board here in Pennsylvania I'm seeing these documents go so far beyond where they should go and if a company says this to you, and I'm getting fi <laughs> getting fired up, you know, I am so sick and tired of hearing companies say, well, this is what we do. Well, this is what other people have signed. Well, that argument is, is a nothing argument. It, it means nothing to me. I don't care what other people did. That isn't a standard of any kind. I don't care what other lawyers did. You know, if somebody else does a bad job, doesn't mean that we have to do a bad job. I don't care what other people have done. What I care about is what's in front of me, what does this say, and how is it going to impact my client? The fact that a hundred other people signed a really bad agreement doesn't matter at all to me. What matters to me is what you've presented to my client and is this something that I'm comfortable to recommend to them. And it kills me, it kills me, it kills me. And they use it with landowners all the time. And when a, when a company guy, a landman comes out and says, oh, well, everybody's signing this, or yeah, this has been approved by other attorneys, I don't care. I don't care. I don't know who this attorney was. I don't know if they knew anything at all what they were doing. I don't know what these landowners did. And so one landowner signs, and so you can say, well, Mr. Smith over here, he has 500 acres, and this is what he signed. Again, that's irrelevant. So when they're giving you that argument, that to me should throw up red flags. I don't care what other people have done. I care what I'm presented with. And I'm seeing this all the time. You get these damage releases, they're super broad and the problem is 
it's 95% of the people that you see them don't even understand what they're saying. I mean, I sometimes have to sit there and dissect them and break them down and break them down because I read through them and I'm like, what the heck did I just read? You know, you have to break down each sentence. They're very convoluted. And it tells you if something is hard to understand, you need to make sure you are, you are understanding it. It's not hard to understand by accident. It's hard to understand intentionally, and you need to understand these documents. So when you're giving up rights and you're releasing a company or anybody at any time, you need to know what rights you're giving up. This is a serious situation. And usually, we're able to clean this up quick. It's almost like, oh, well, you got me. Uh, okay, we can change that, we can change that. Because the flat out truth is, all you have to do as a landowner is release the company for the damages that they're paying you for. No more, no less. I can't say this enough times with every single agreement. What do we want? We want the company to follow their agreement. Whenever they want anything and it's in the agreement, they say, we have the right, we have the right, we can do it. Too bad it's in your agreement. Well, you know what, company? Cuts both ways. Follow your agreement also. I am Doug Clark, all things Marcellus. I'm really up against it. Have a great week, everyone.